She's really a stout little ship. I think that's one way I feel about it. Very solid all the way around. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Captain! Uh, Randy! Hurry, buddy, hurry. We've got, got an episode in here today. All right, you're getting oh, a workout in. We're on Peaks Island right now, coming out to visit a boat for our, 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 this episode. We've been invited here by the owner of a Shannon 28 that was built in 1981. Shannon boats were built in Bristol, Rhode Island, but th that happened because a man named Walt Schultz. Can I let this down? Yeah. Okay, thank heaven. Oh, goodness gracious. Walt. Uh, got very excited about boats and he just realized it was going to be in his blood and he ended up working in boat yards helping commission boats and paint them and and uh, do all this sort of thing up in Connecticut uh, then he got involved briefly with a gentleman named uh, George Staddle who was a surveyor and a uh, yacht designer and commercial boat designer. He, he sort of did an understudy bit of work with him on naval architecture. <laughs> a year later Walt started his own company and their idea was to put together as good a boat as you possibly could could find and as a little bit of proof of that put pudding uh, there's a wonderful book out uh, by a man named uh, Frank Maté called the best looking sailboats in the world. Boats that were included in that collection were Abel Marine, uh, Alden, uh, Camper Nicholson, Cherubini, Hinckley, Halberg Rassi, Morris, and also included in there was Shannon Boatworks. So he felt they had the look, and that was his main thrust, was to find things that were really well done and that were pleasant to his eye, that he really loved. One of our biggest questions is, is this a blue water boat? Back in 1983, a man named uh, Monk Farnham, who was the ex-editor of Boating and Rudder, took one of these and sailed across the Atlantic and back again. Now, that's pretty cool, except for the fact that Monk was 74 years old and has set the record as the oldest, at that time, man who had sailed single-handedly across the Atlantic and back, and it was done in a Shannon 28. Seems like you might be next. I am. I'm going for it. I'm yeah. going for it. This this could be it. You could right break here. the record. Okay, let's talk about the hull for a minute. Since we're standing on the deck, we have a chance to look at it. This one is in particularly nice shape. Uh, it looks like original gel coat here. It has a rub streak along the side here that we like with a stainless steel cap on it, and um, the. Uh, teak tow rail goes right along the whole length of the boat and it has a cap on top of that. This boat is put together uh, with two halves of a mold that are bolted together and then the whole boat is glassed when they're bolted together, okay? Wow. And that way they can develop a, an internal flange. So there's a flange that comes up here and goes inside. And then on top of that uh, goes this piece here which then gets screwed down uh, through the the rail cap here and then down through the the uh, flange inside and they've even put a piece of wood underneath the flange inside the deck it's an incredibly solid seam all along the deck to haul and leaks are just not considered on this boat while we're here notice too the chain plates here they've set them uh, thwart chips and the reason for that is uh, you always want a fair lead from this jaw up to the rig, up to the spreaders, and many times people will put these in longitudinally this way, which means that these jaws, if it's like that, they would have to bend over. So this is a, just a better design. There's an extra shroud here, and the reason this is here is that if you lost an upper shroud and the mast uh, were to break up there, this piece right here, keep it tight. But what it also does, it applies a backup to the staysail shroud up forward. What do you think about the natural teak? Natural teak uh, is fine. This has all been maintained well. Varnish oh, it looks a little more yachty. This looks a little bit more worldly, world traveled. I mean, these boats first hit the market, they were ending up around $175,000 for one of these 28 for, footers. Wow. So, but uh, everything is perfection. There's a nice one and a quarter inch, maybe one inch uh, sail track right here and uh, with ability to put different 
cars and they've got uh, sliding cleats. These sliding cleats are a nice idea because you never know where you're going to end up in a marina, how you're going to set up your breast lines or your spring lines. What's the difference between a breast line and a spring line? Well, the spring lines tend to keep the boat from going forward or backward. This is a spring line here. There should be, if I had my way right now, I would change this line to lead further forward. And uh, uh, spring lines tend to cross like so, okay? And then so when the boat surges one way, one spring stops, and if it surges back the other way, the other does. And a breast line simply does what it sounds like. It keeps things abreast. So if you want to keep this boat tight into the dock, this line would be very handy to snug up. And so rather than having to step across three feet, I could step across two feet to get on board. So this is a nice breast line uh, arrangement here. Looking back, something else that's been a great signature for uh, Shannon Boats, it is a wonderful diamond pattern, which is very grippy without being painful, but it's, it's really got some nice interesting tooth to it. Is that molded or how do they do that? that? Is, that's molded right in, yep. Okay, starting on the bow, Randy, you notice we have a, uh, a pretty solid uh, bow spit here, and I know you like that. You'll um, feel safe out there, I'm won't you? I'm a big you? fan, yep. And uh, it has two anchor rollers set up. There's two sets of, of forward head stays here. One is the head stay, one is the staysail stay right beside you there. Both set up with roller furling. The staysail sail is bigger than your average staysail. And the Yankee up on the bow uh, here is going to be a little smaller uh, and still give you a sail area, but when it starts to blow up, you just roll that puppy up. You've got a good size staysail here which goes up, it's like a 7 8 rig on the older boats. That will balance nicely with your mainsail. Port running light right here, mounted up high on a nice piece of teak uh, woodwork and a stainless uh, casing. Coming aft, you see a, a manual windlass, and you can put a hand crank in there. You see where it goes in the slot there for a hand crank? You'll see a, a gypsy for the chain. This is a staysail boom. If you notice right down below it, there's a, a traveler. And you can, you can trim that, that staysail, cleat it down in the cockpit, and then you can just tack back and forth going to windward, and the, and the boom will carry out and it'll give you a nice trim uh, for your staysail. He's got some uh, solar um, pickup here on top of the Dodger and also on top of the sunshade over the helmsman. Right here, something we haven't seen before is a boom gallows right here, and it's got three separate notches in it where you can just drop the boom down into it where it'll keep it steady and keep it from moving about. And it's all done in, in uh, bronze there, brass uh, fitting, which would polish up. I bet that would polish up very nice. Let me come aboard and let's take a look at the uh, cockpit. What do you say? Yeah, come on board. Okay, Randy, I found my usual spot back here. Self-steering gear is it's become so prevalent among among the boats, and especially single-handers. But it simply means that there's no electricity. It's just the wind and the gods and the sea driving you along, and you can go to sleep until the next freighter comes by. Uh, and they use these self-steering gear out here. And this ha this model happens to be a monitor. And we can't tell right now, but there's a big feather, so to speak, that sits on the back of this. There's another type that's called a hydrovane, which actually just hangs off the transom, and it actually steers the boat. What this does, this, tell, this sends a message, and you can see these lines coming up to this little drum around the outside of the wheel here, and that's what steers the boat. And I've never had one of these myself, so I've always used um, uh, the good old Raymarine autopilot, like this guy right here and you punch the button, you get on your course, and you go from A to B. It's been wonderful. You can hook that into your GPS. It's wonderful, but the whole time you're doing that, you're using up battery power. Whereas the self-steering vane, aft, goes forever. We have a big Raymarine uh, display in front of me here, and uh, of course, uh, Edson pedestal with a uh, Ritchie compass in it. This particular boat had a steering problem. Really, what, yeah. kind, of, what kind of problem? Well, the cable parted. This, there's a chain drive that goes down and it hooks over a, a gear up here inside the uh, pedestal and it goes down and then splits off into uh, shivs on either side of the uh, bilge down there and then comes back, it comes to a quadrant which is a piece that's sort of like this and these wires one way you turn the wheel one way and it will pull the quadrant that way you turn it the other way and it will pull it back the other way. Well these are nothing more than uh, I think it's 7 by 17 wire, soft wire that will uh, eventually get tired, you know, 
and one of those wires broke on this boat just recently. As we speak, there is a repairman uh, up gathering parts to complete this, this uh, repair. But let's say we're out at sea and suddenly we're going, whoa, we got a problem here, Randy. <laughs> I can't steer the boat. What do I do? Have you got an idea for me? I do. What can I do? Well, I've got this little thing I, I stumbled across. Oh, a Babe Ruth? It's a Louisville Slugger. Louisville Slugger. Look at this thing. This is a beauty. This is the auxiliary tiller. It goes just like this uh, with the uh, little uh, nose down and just slide it right inside there and it kind of locks in place. Look at how it locks right up and you've got, got a nice tilt on it and we're, we're steering the boat. So Randy, um, if you want to do a little cooking on board, you just turn on the stove below and click the gas and you've got, uh, there's 40 pounds of propane, liquid propane waiting for you to um, cook your food. If you notice, there are, are hatches on either side of the cockpit. So you know what that means. No quarter berth. No quarter berth, right. Now this hatch is loaded with gear. You've got your bumpers and your dock lines and some other stuff. And they're nicely laced onto little hooks down here so you can reach down and grab them. On the starboard side, right in front of Sea Dog, we have another heavy, heavy lot. This thing, these things are really solid. But look at the size of that. I could really stand down there and I'd be probably up to about my chest. This is a nice big Bomar um, uh, aluminum access hatch that the owner put into this boat just to get, I know the engine is right underneath here. So uh, you're gonna be able to get pretty wonderful access to the engine. We'll take a look below, see what we can find looking from the galley area, but it's gonna be tough to beat this. That's a nice modification. It yeah. really is. And this is a major watertight, waterproof hatch. So nothing's gonna get past that. Uh, another nice thing too for the offshore sailor is that notice the size of this footwell here again. It's pretty small and it has not one or two drains, but four drains in each corner. Come on down, guy. All right. Uh, this is uh, this is really a handsome vessel down here. One of the things you have to understand is, first of all, we're looking at a boat that's got a V-berth and it's got a, it's got settees on either side of the main cabin. It has a beautifully varnished fold-up table, you know, that'll that'll take you know four people down here. Uh, sitting at it. All the wood here is solid. There is no uh, sheet plywood or anything. And the concept there was they wanted to know that if you nicked anything, if you nicked the wood or this or something, it wasn't going to start to stain like a piece of plywood would if you broke the surface of it. One thing they hated to do was to screw into the fiberglass hull or the fiberglass deck. So what they would do, for example, around this port light right here, they would trim around that with a uh, small pieces of plywood and then they would glass over that plywood and then they would build the paneling around it and then they would bolt the the uh, port light through this wood into uh, that plywood underneath it and the concept there was to keep it very tight and very dry and every time they would put something out close to the hull they would encase it in in a mat and roving so each piece becomes almost like a little extra uh, stringer of sorts. There are a couple of major stringers behind this wood we can't see. Uh, the chain plates, which are covered up right now, uh, like so, are enormous. They start out with about half inch plywood, and then they add teak and some other things to it. And by the time they're finished, it's about uh, a one and a half inch knee that comes down here that supports those chain plates. The bulkheads behind me. Now, when these are put in, they originally fit them in with uh, uh, foam between the outer edge that, that meets the, the hull and uh, then they, they tab it there. Then they, they make certain everything is true and straight and then they come through and they, they drill holes through the bulkhead and then tape through those holes the bulkhead down to the side of the boat. Underneath all of that we're sitting on, all the underframing and subframing uh, is all mahogany. Anytime you open up, uh, you'll see the uh, floor joists and longitudinals and, and thwart ships joists going underneath all this furniture. It's all mahogany, which by the way, is totally uh, water resistant coated before it gets installed into the boat. An amazing amount of work goes into these things. And this is, this is what you pay for when you, when you buy a boat like this. They, they build these boats to be fixed if necessary down the road and everybody understands that certain things will give way not the least of which can often be uh, your tanks and all three tanks 
can be pulled out of this boat with simple tools and no cutting. Okay, Randy, once now, we still have a sea out there. We got some boats rolling by, so I'm very happy to have these hand holds here. So to put this overhead up, they set up a series of battens underneath here, and then this, and the battens all got glassed over, and then this got glassed up right to the bottom of the battens. So what that means is that like the panels here where the port lights are set in, there's air space behind this, air space behind that, which keeps air going through the whole boat all the time, everywhere. There's air flowing in and out of the boat. And with the ven ventilated hatches everywhere, uh, nothing is going to get stale. It should be very sweet on this boat all the time. Nice sized galley, very compact, uh, really well set up. Uh, we have our pot and pan storage, right? Uh, we have a good sized sink. There's no foot pedal here on this sink, but there's a hand pump, so you can, you know, pull up your, your, your uh, fresh water that way, and there's hot and cold pressure water. Um, two burner propane stove, a hiller, and just good old stock standby uh, propane stove and oven. You get a nice cutting board with it for your lemons and limes. <laughs> We've got storage everywhere, and we have uh, another. Uh, uh, advocate of our friend Dinty. And we have refrigeration on board here and this is kind of nice because it's engine driven and also uh, it can be shut off and just run by the uh, solar panels up on deck. All of the electronics are down here. There's a VHF. Here's your uh, propane gas control. Very handy to the galley. Uh, bilge pump uh, with a manual or uh, um, I'm just pumping it right now. There we go. Just pumping out right now. There we go. Nice now, and dry. Nice and dry. Here's all your circuit uh, breakers for your bow lights, interior lights, compass lights, and all that. So this is pretty tidy for your uh, AC and your DC uh, uh, panels there as well. And your battery switch. What How are about, these doing here? Little sail ties. Sail ties. Great place to hang your sail ties. You come on board, you take the sail apart, you, and you pull the sail ties, and just hang them right, just drape them in here. We've taken the Campania way out, and uh, I'm lifting up this piece right here, and of course they've made accommodation for that to sit up. This engine has been replaced. This is the upgrade. The original uh, engine that came with these was about 15 horse, and uh, this is now 25 horse, we believe. Yeah, somewhere around that. I think you said there's about 750 hours on this engine. So wow, that's, that's great. Uh, we've got uh, three uh, six volt batteries in series down here. I got a quiz here for you. What yeah. do I see here that's a really good thing about your batteries? Well, they're not in the bilge. That's one thing. Which we like. Uh, they're strapped down. That's it, right there. Oh, you got it. Second, <laughs> second guess. <laughs> second guess. Uh, they should always be strapped down in, in your boat. Even though they look like they fit tightly into a box, there should be some sort of strap like this piece right here. And this boat this boat will roll over in, in, in a big enough ocean, I'm sure. Uh, but when it's upside down for that split second, you want those batteries to stay right there. Your uh, uh, raw water pump is right here, and uh, uh, that's going to be a little tricky with your with your socket wrench, but it'll come off. You mean to get the impeller out? To get the impeller out, right. Yeah. Here's the heat exchanger right here. You can pull that apart and clean that out if you've got a question. Everything, everything you need is pretty much in, in good shape. Who's there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who else would it be? Okay. Hi. Hey, pal. What's the first thing we like about this head? Uh, it's fore and aft. Right, that's it. Because you might hit a big wave, but chances are the worst case is when you're healing, you don't want to be thrown out of the boat. So you're really wedged in here. So the, the head has been changed on this boat, which is great. After all those years, it's, it, it makes sense. Um, again, solid lock of doors and everything is finished inside. Okay, Randy, uh, just two last things before I leave my little library here. Uh, is one, if you look down here for a second, the, the doors behind here, this is all the plumbing for the uh, head. And this allows it to go to the holding tank or to overboard when you're offshore. Uh, but one nice thing about it, it's right there in your face. It, I mean, you, you, can, you can see where everything goes and how the valves turn and so forth. That's often very tricky. Uh, there's also a, a little uh, um, bleeder at the top of that to prevent uh, siphoning back into the boat. And the other thing is just an observation of my part, if this was my boat, I would have a nice bench going right across here 
coming from this side to the other. And that would be a place to sit and shower. And I had my shower head in there. And it would be a really nice, really, would really give you a big sense of room in here. And then that could fold up so you could use the head. Now, locker space, storage. We're just loaded with it. And uh, look at the finish down on the floor of this piece. Uh, this is your flare box, but look how nicely that's done down in there, those ceilings down there. Lots of storage there and more storage up here. But the other thing too, I want you to notice, this whole, see the color in here? That's all sprayed in uh, resin coating that's put in to the mold after the boat's been all laid up. So all of that's really smooth and tight. Both these set keys are small right now, but when you, you can see how big they are when you take the cushions out and that will slide out. There are tankies under here, water tanks. All of these can be pulled out and replaced. So. And then it's got your favorite little thing at the end. It does, it's kind of a cool thing. I love it when they do these things uh, because these, these bunks, this one's a little longer because it has a seat back here, but uh, they have the little foot wells and your feet will fit right in there. Mine will fit in there, Randy. We should probably see if yours fit in there. Yeah. Do you think we should try yours in there? We could try it. I think we should. Look at that. Pretty good. Now, just for the record, what size are those uh, gunboats in there? Uh, 11 and a half. 11 and a half? Yeah. Really? Oh my gosh. Oh, while I'm standing here, I want you to notice I'm standing here. We have, look at the headroom. Pretty great. Six one plus uh, the hat, which we know is what, another inch or so up there? And there's clearance on the hat. So I can wear the Captain Q hat below deck on this boat and be have no problem. I've got hanging uh, uh, bars here too. I can do my gymnastics. And you need these everywhere. And I'm so glad to see they put them everywhere. Speaking of gymnastics. Yes. Oh, well, we have a V-berth up here. Now this is a little different because you see our cabin trunk, this part of the cabin right here, kind of ends right here. Usually we see that end further forward. So today, we're going to have to see if we can manage to get ourselves in here. Uh, this is a higher degree of difficulty. This is one of the higher degrees. We're gonna give it a shot though. And there's Linda, praying for him down below. He's never done this before. He does not know what to expect. He's in the air, he's in good shape. Very good. We've done it. And, oh, there we go. Once in place, this is one of the more comfortable mattresses. It feels like it might be that uh, memory foam, possibly. But anyway, I'm sitting here, I've got uh, two derades up on deck that are funneling air right down to me, right here. One here, and one on the port side. And uh, a little electric fan right now, I could probably turn that on. There's a little tiny hatch right here, just forward of the mast, uh, which is good for a little ventilation. But we've got a pretty good, we've got about, uh, Oh, almost four square feet of opening up here with a very heavy duty uh, hatch. But we're on a 28 foot boat and we're trying to think, gee, shouldn't we have more room or shouldn't we be able to do more stuff on the boat? No, it's 28 feet long. One thing they've done with the boat, which is great, rather than uh, put the head forward uh, on this particular boat, the head is aft on the port side. Uh, it, when the minute you move the head forward, you, you know, it just doesn't work very well on a boat this size. This is good. Do you have a pillow for me too? You know, what do we think? Do you like this? I think objects at rest tend to stay at rest. They do. Good night. This is a Shannon 28 and in really very good condition. Although, you know, I think no matter what you find that's been built by Shannon, the hull, deck, and interior fittings and so forth, the non-wearing parts, as they like to say in the automotive industry, are always gonna be rock solid. It has everything you need. All the electronics have been updated. The motor's been uh, replaced. Would you like a rating? I would, yeah. Uh, we know, this is floating right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is currently Anybody floating. will know that it's a 10 as we speak. She's sitting there bobbing at the dock. Because she's a Shannon, and we now know how Shannon builds their boats, automatic five on top of that. And for the offshore one solo sailor who wants to go be a blue water navigator and voyager, I gotta give another five because it's right up there. This is this is one of those, this is a 20. I'm really glad we got a chance to see this boat. She's really a stout little ship. I think that's one way I feel about it. Very solid all the way around. This is definitely a blue water boat for the guy or gal that wants to go uh, offshore and sail around the world.
If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes. A little bit early. That's pretty cool. A preview. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>